I am Mr. S and I'm welcoming you this evening to this video. We're looking here at McLaurin series, the sine expansion and a particular application related to the sine function. Before we start with this, remember the McLaurin series is Taylor series except it's centered around zero. When you're looking at Taylor series for a specific function which has the ability to be expanded, you're looking at from n equals zero to infinity, you have a nth order derivative into which the a value feeds n factorial in the denominator x minus a to the power of n. A function which is centered or a power series centered around a, that's your Taylor series. When you're looking at Maclaurin series, it's centered around zero. That a, everywhere where you see a, is converted into a zero. And keep in mind this very important point. The zero is feeding into the derivative function. It's not feeding into this x over here, but it's feeding into the orders of your derivative that's where it goes into here you have that the a has been lost because it was a zero when you're looking at everything here with regards to the sine x what is our eventual goal for this if you can do a series expansion and develop a good rule that rule part is just irrelevant technically and from a practical and realistic point of view but it would be good for educational purposes but if you can expand the sine series then you should be able to approximate values such as sine one sine to sine 5, sine 10, whatever these numbers might be. We'll look at just sine 1 and sine 2. In terms of approximation, like what is the algorithm behind all of this? This is what you're really looking at. How does everything stem? Everything stems from right here from McLaurin series, which as I'll tell you again, is still Taylor series. You wanna start with everything here with regards to determination of your derivatives. If f of x is equal to sine x, then you have to do a certain number of order derivatives will do up to five. Your zeroth order derivative of sine x is nothing other than just sine x. Your first order derivative is the derivative of that. It's cosine x. Your second order derivative would be with regards to your original, but it would be a next order derivative from your previous step. It would be here minus sine x. What else we have? The third order derivative would be, you can just do the derivative of that, you'll have minus cosine x, and your fourth order derivative would be the derivative of that, which would be sine x. And you see here we've shuffled back to your original. This is equal to your zeroth order derivative. And then you can say your fifth order derivative would be the derivative of this, which is cosine x, which would be equal to your first order derivative. You see how things recycle? That's exactly what you have here. When you're looking at everything, you're looking at this with regards to your sine x. You can put everything like this equals to what you have over here you can say n equals zero up to infinity and then you can start placing things right over here and we will you have a factorial over here you have x to the power of n when you expand it out you will expand it out and start creating your maclaurin polynomials of n terms but what we can do for neatness sake let's just say m the nth Maclaurin polynomial with regards to variable x. We'll start itemizing everything here, then we'll classify it. And I'll show you exactly what I mean when the time comes. What will be the first item? Of course, it'll be n equals zero. You put everything right here. There's a little bit of thunder going on outside and rain. Hopefully it's not annoying anyone, but when n is equal to zero, you're putting here into your derivative, the order of derivative. Remember it was order of derivative with the a, here a is equal to zero, that zero is feeding right over here. And all of those values are here. You're gonna have sine of zero, and then you're gonna have x to the power of zero divided by zero factorial. The next item is n equals one. Remember n equals zero, one, two, three, four, and onwards. Then you're gonna find your next order derivative, which is cosine, but these are gonna feed the values of zero, because here again, a equals zero, that converts the Taylor into Maclaurin series. And in all instances, these represent the order derivatives of your original function, which receive the A values. Here you're gonna have a one factorial x to the one. And then the next item is a minus. So let's bring a minus over here. You'll have here a minus sign, it'll receive a zero. You'll have x squared over two factorial. The next item is a minus, you'll have a minus, and then you'll receive another zero. You'll have x cubed over three factorial. The next item is a, the fourth item. It's really the fifth item because it's always n plus one terms, right? The number of terms is always one more because we're starting here our count from a zero. But it's our, let's just say, n equals fourth item, n equals four item. And here we'll have a positive, you'll receive a sign. 
sine of a zero x to the four over four factorial. I want to bring in one more term. Can I squeeze it in over here? I hope I can. And it'll be a cosine, and you'll receive a cosine of a zero x to the five divided by five factorials. Now, let's start identifying our polynomials. Our m zero polynomial would be just this. From here to here would represent my m one polynomial. You know the m one Maclaurin polynomial because it's always composed of the term before. From here up to here would be my m two polynomial. From here up to here would be my m3 polynomial. You see how everything goes out. Everything from before up to here is my m4 polynomial. And then everything from the start all the way here is my m5 polynomial. And that's exactly what it is. Now what remains to be done? We have to clean this up. Because everything over here you're seeing is all able to be simplified by means of computations and let's do it we'll do it all up over here on the top now what i'm looking at over here it represents a polynomial fifth order polynomial of maclaurin series which is still taylor series polynomial but for specificity we're calling it maclaurin polynomial i'm going to bring all of this computation i'm just creating the m5 polynomial because it's made up of all the terms up to that n equals five and everything which comes before it sine of zero is always a zero that's zeros out. Cosine of zero is a one. It hits with this x over one factorial. We just write x divided by one factorial. I won't skip out on these factorials for the purpose of keeping everything consistent. There's the sine of a zero, but there's a minus. It's a minus zero. Here's a minus cosine of a zero. That's always a minus one. Then you'll have a minus x cubed over three factorial. Then I have a sine of a zero. It zeros out all of that. There's a plus zero. Then I have this cosine zero x to the five over five factorial, my n equals five term. I'll have over here x to the five over five factorial. Now you can see, get rid of the zeros. It cleans down into an item, which I'm gonna start putting for you right over here. Remember our eventual goal again is still to do our approximations. We're doing all of this so we can approximate this to a good reasonable degree. The M5 polynomial in the end cleans out to this. You have X over one factorial minus X cubed or three factorial plus X to the five or five factorial. But now can you start extrapolating other terms? Yes, you can. It alternates in terms of signs and everything is odd number. Then this would be minus X to the seven or seven factorial. Then you'll have X to the nine or nine factorial. And then you'll have minus X to the 11 or 11 factorial. And I'll stop over here. But now look, I have till N equals 11. So I'm gonna convert this into my M11 Maclaurin 11 polynomial. Polynomial which goes up to N equals 11. Now, how do you find sine one and sine two? It's no different than you putting your values of one and two here. This now actually represents not my A value. It represents my X value right here. If I want to find sine of one, I'm really looking at this m11 of one. The one value feeding into my 11th Maclaurin polynomial in the places of x. And it will be nothing other than calculator computations. Before I do that, I want to clean everything out here on the bottom and show you what the series rule is. For all the terms that you saw, which now you can look at just this, your series rule would be something like this. You're looking at from n equals zero up to infinity. You see alternating of positive and negative, starting with positive, and you, you see odd numbers in the in the exponents of the numerator and in the factorials of the denominator. You'll have minus one to the power of n. Then you'll have x to the power of two n plus one divided by two n plus one factorial. Always remember two n plus one represents a good way and you can remember you can memorize this. Two n plus one represents a good way to generate odd numbers. If you look at all of this, this represents your series. If you do n equals zero, you'll have this form and you'll see it. I'm just gonna show you for confidence reasons. If n is equal to zero, you're looking at minus one to the power of zero. Then you have x to the power of one because two times zero is a zero. And then two times zero plus one, you have a one. This gives you here a x over one factorial because minus one to the even exponent is a positive. If n is equal to one, you're looking at minus one to the power of one. And then you have x to the power of three and three factorial. And here you'll see minus x cubed over three factorial. If n were equal to two, you'd see that this will be my last step over here. You'll see minus one to the power of two. You'll have x to the power of five divided by five factorial. Here you'll get positive. See minus one squared is a positive. You'll have positive x to the five or five factorial. And it matches everything over here. So this rule is indeed good. Let's compute this. It'll be nothing other than calculator strokes. 
I'm looking at the placement of 1 to calculate sine 1 in the places of x. I'll do 1 over 1 factorial minus 1 over 6. 3 factorial is a 6 plus 1 over 120 minus 1 over 5040 plus 1 over 9 factorial minus 1 over 11 factorial. Let's calculate this and we'll post it out for you. I'll do everything here on the calculator. 1 divided by 1 minus 1 divided by 6 plus 1 divided by 120 minus 1 divided by 5040 plus 1 divided by 9 factorial minus 1 divided by 11 factorial. I'm getting this value 0 0.84147 and I'm putting it out here 0 0.84147 This is what's generating from this series expansion of sine x up to n equals 11. You know if you go up to n equals infinity it'll equal the exact value. How can you determine it? Put your calculator on the RAD mode, the radian mode. Hit 1 and then sign. You have 0 0.84147094. All of these numbers, but I am sure there are many other numbers afterwards which probably would not match because here we only went into n equals 11. If you went to n equals infinity, we would have the exact value. But here you see it, everything has been generated for sine 1. We've approximated the value of sine 1 using Maclaurin series expansion of that sine function. I'm erasing this because you've seen this. I want to compute sine 2 for you. If you want to compute sine 2, you can use again the same expansion here we have for series. Just do M11 in the 11th Maclaurin polynomial. You're putting the value 2 in places of x. Here you'll do 2 over 1 factorial. Here you'll do minus 8 over 6 3 factorial plus 2 to the power of 5 is 32 over 5 factorial 120 minus 2 to the power of 7 is 128 divided by 7 factorial 5040 plus 2 exponent 9 is 512 divided by 9 factorial minus 2 exponent 11 which is right here 2048 divided by 11 factorial. Let's compute this and then we'll compare it to the calculator value. We have to do all of this computation. We'll do 2 minus 8 divided by 6 plus 32 divided by 120 minus 128 divided by 5040 plus 512 divided by 9 factorial and minus 2048 divided by 11 factorial. I'm getting here 0 0.90929 and I'll put the values here. 0 0.90929636. This is the value I'm getting for sine 2 using an approximation. You know Maclaurin series and Taylor series are excellent for approximating the values of a function that's exactly what we're doing put your calculator on the rad mode hit 2 and then sign it and you get 0 0.90929 now i'm off i'm off because for sign 2 i probably should go to a higher end value the calculator value i'm getting is 0 0.90929726 I'm off from here, 6136 and then 7426. These numbers are off, but everything before is good. So the Maclaurin series or the Taylor series gives you very good approximations. Just keep in mind there's some functions out, out there where you don't get very good approximations, but those type of functions are rare. For the majority of functions, you get very good approximations, and that's what we're talking about here. The series use in terms of generating approximations for functional values. That's the main essences of this video. And it brings us to the end. Our focus here was sine x, approximating sine 1 and sine 2. We did everything here on the RAD mode. But this computation here doesn't depend on the RAD mode, just your verification procedure. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.